morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I just shortened my intro a little bit because I think it was maybe a little bit too long. The reason it is four minutes long or was four minutes long is because I remember watching another person around noonish at my time and I needed the time to, you know, get somewhere where I could actually watch it without getting into trouble or taking my lunch or whatever. So I've shortened it. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, okay, Angela, that's great. Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for joining me for another live Q&A session today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business, and I answer your questions in these weekly live Q&A sessions. If you're not new here, then you know that every day, we or every week rather, we have a new poll. And this week, the poll is, what is your biggest obstacle in becoming a voice actor? And I ask this question because I hear a lot. I get questions everywhere on all my social media platforms about how do I know if I can be a good voice actor or a voice actor in general? And I think that question stems from something holding you back from just trying it, right? What is that? What is that thing that is holding you back? Are you asking for someone's permission to move forward? Are you concerned that your voice is not good enough? Are you maybe wanting just to try something new, but maybe your heart's not really in it? You just want to try something that you want to do from home? And don't get me wrong, this is a great way to make money at home. But with any new business, not just voiceover or audiobook narration, it takes dedication, it takes time, it takes education, it takes training, it takes investment in having the right gear, getting the training, understanding your recording software. And I think if you have those in addition to a strong why, I mean, what what is your why for wanting to do this? I think that is one of the more important things, your why. Because as I've said before in a few videos here on my channel, that if you don't have a strong why for wanting to do this, if your heart's not 100% in it, you may not get very far. This is a business. This is something that requires dedication, time, training, practice, right? Possibly reaching out to a mentor or a coach or a group, you know, staying on top of trends that things are always changing, right? This is a, this is a marathon. You know, it's a marathon. You're constantly learning and evolving and improving, and if you don't have a strong why, then, you know, you may not be in this very long. And not only that, but just like any other business, you might not make money right away, right? Sometimes it's going to take some time. But I think that also comes from whatever it is that's holding you back from moving forward in this journey. And I think a lot of people get stuck on that, that one obstacle, right? Right. And it's not really, am I good enough? You know, what makes what makes a good voice actor? Apart from the performance. Because number one, voice acting is acting. And so what do you need to have to be a good actor? Effective communication skills. Right? Can you interpret the script? Do you have the patience? Right? Because I, and I've said this a million times before, and I apologize, but voice actors represent the world. We represent the voices of the world. So there's going to be a need, I think, for any and all voices, right, to represent all of the people in the world. So I think no matter what your voice 
sounds like, as long as you can effectively communicate the script, right, the intention, the purpose, the emotion of the script, then you can be a voice actor. Practicing, training, having the right DAW, understand, not, not having the right DAW, but uh, understanding your DAW, right? Knowing how to edit and format and master and do all of those things is just part of it, right? It's part of, of evolving and honing and improving and just getting better at this. But anyway, but that's what I think that question comes from, is how do I know I'm good enough to do this? Or how do I know if my voice is right to do this? I think you can, but what is it that's holding you back from just moving forward? Let's take a look at the poll. So the options in the poll for what is your biggest obstacle in becoming a voice actor? Is it the performance or acting aspect? Is it the technical aspects? You know, understanding or learning your DAW or how all of the equipment works or how it works together in harmony, right? Uh, funds for the gear or training because the gear is a necessary aspect. It's, it's a necessary part of this. So is training. And those require money. So I would say for, for that one really quick, for funds and training, start, start easy and free. Start with YouTube. Join Facebook groups. Ask questions. As I've said before, this is one of the most helpful and supportive industries that I've ever had the pleasure of being part of. Everybody's willing to help. Most people are willing to help. You just have to ask questions. And then once you start to get a little bit of income coming in, you know, start investing that into better equipment and training, right? That's the natural progression of things. The other option for the poll was time or schedule. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, I worked at a job that required me to be available almost all the time. I was out of the house for at least 11 hours a day working this job with commute, being there, doing the thing, and then driving home, and then doing this in the evenings or on the weekends until I was, you know, um, set up enough to go full time, which took me just about two years, somewhere between a year and a half and two years. So it does take time and you can do it. So don't tell yourself that any of these things are going to hold you back. There is a way to improve, get past, learn, whatever these things are that are holding you back. There is a way to get through them. You just have to have the dedication and the time. And again, your why, your strong why are going to pull you through all of these things. So you can get to where you want to be, which is a voice actor, right? And there may be some ebbs and flows. You know, there may be some dips. There might be some, you know, crazy weeks where you're just raking it in. <laughs> it's inconsistent. But again, your why is going to pull you through those as well. I feel like I'm already off on a tangent. Anyway, 20% of you said performance or acting. 27% of you said technical aspects or DAW. I can feel that. Funds for gear or training, 17% of you said that, and 37% of you, the majority of you, said time and schedule. Yep, I get that. I think the thing that has helped me the most for the time and schedule is my agenda book. It has, keep, it has kept me on top of things that I needed to address, people I needed to meet, client meetings that I needed to, you know, to make. Um, if I had audiobooks, I would write down what chapters needed to be done on what day, so on and so forth, to help me keep on track of things. Because once you have, <clears throat> and I think most of us do have like a normal daily schedule, right? You get up, you go to work, you come home, you get the kids, you make dinner, and then the evenings are almost always pretty much yours, right? Unless you have a night job, then it might be reversed, but you know your schedule, so you know when you have time available. And yeah, you might have to sacrifice a couple hours of sleep in the beginning to get things going. 
But again, if you if your why is strong enough to do this, then you will make those sacrifices. I did. I had to sacrifice time away from my family to get this going, but you can. You can. It's not always easy, but you can. All right. Let's head over to the comments. It's enough of that tangent. Let's see who's first in here today. Wow, lots of comments already. Thanks, guys, for being here. Looks like uh, Joya. Morning, Joya. <clears throat> Confidence is the key element to being a voice actor. Absolutely. I 115% agree with you. And rant ranting, because you got to rant on the on on a one over what you're reading to be convincing. Confidence, I think, comes from overcoming whatever that one obstacle is. It was for me anyway. And it continues to be. Because, you know, every once in a while you have that imposter monster come knocking on the door because you're stuck on something. Right? It could be an obstacle that it really isn't even an obstacle. You're just telling yourself it's an obstacle because of whatever reason. Right? But moving past it, getting over it, the confidence and knowing that you can, when you told yourself that you cannot, <laughs> that confidence is so powerful in helping to propel you forward, right? And then to your point, sometimes you have to say things over and over again. <clears throat> You're reading a script and you're maybe playing with different interpretations of it and say it and then narrating it, you know, giving a few different takes of a few different interpretations, knowing that you can, that you understand, and then you can effectively communicate that is powerful. That's powerful confidence. And then Joya says, confidence is the key element to being a voice actor. Oh, okay, this is the same message. So good you had to put it in twice, right? I don't know why these things do that sometimes. Rusta Killbilly is here. Good morning from sunny Oregon. It's sunny just about everywhere. I think I read this morning there were 14 states in excessive heat warning. Mine being one of them. It's hotter than... Brianna Roy... Roy Waybright? What is wrong with my mouth today? <clears throat> I think this is... Um, is Annie, right? My obstacle is not finding enough jobs to audition for. Fiverr is getting zero impressions. Upwork is so competitive. ACX is very scarce right now for decent pay, that is. I'm too broke for pay-to-play sites. Then step outside of the pay-to-plays. Market yourself on social media. And I've said this before, but you can't rely on these sites to bring you money. Their job is to get traffic to their site, not to get traffic to you. <laughs> If they're not working for you, then change up the algorithms on these sites. Refresh your gigs on Fiverr. Change the title. Change the tag. Up, update the thumbnail. Do the same thing with your Upwork profile. ACX, again, a lot of people I'm seeing lately are starting to try different avenues for audiobooks. Plus, there's a lot of people on ACX. There's a lot of people out there trying their hand at this. So get on social media. Start showing the, you know, your connections on social media that you, what you do, that you're an audiobook narrator, and this is what you do, and that you are available. That way they can also hear you. They can see what you sound like or hear what you sound like. And then you make new connections on social media. I mean, there's, there are other ways to do this other than to rely on pay to plays. And I wouldn't rely on pay to plays anyway. Get out there and introduce yourself to the world. Step outside of that box. Think broader. Think wider. Uh, Caesar says, hi, Angela. I picked funds for gear because currently I'm looking into sealing certain parts of the studio for the flattest possible noise floor. But otherwise, everything is also a challenge. <laughs> um, and, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call these things a challenge because that is just setting them as something that is negative. And as you guys know, I try to look at everything with a positive lens. It helps. It helps to not get stuck uh, and ruminate on things that may just make you want to just stop altogether. 
So I look at these things as maybe um, obstacles, speed bumps, minor inconveniences. That tells my brain that there, this is temporary. This is something that I can get past and I will get past it. I just need to figure out the how, right? But I think that's that's something good to do, especially if you're like in an ebb, right? If you're in a lull, then refocus on your studio. You know, fine tune it. Fine tune understanding your DAW. Learn more about your DAW. Get onto social media. Start, you know, coming up with a content strategy. Mm -hmm. Always stay busy. Hey, Phil. Good to see you, Phil. How you doing? Uh, Brianna says, after six months of pumping so much time, energy, and money into voiceover, I'm shifting my energy into other endeavors. I know it's a marathon, but I need income and just feel feel really disheartened. And I totally understand that. I totally understand that. And again, I wouldn't throw in the towel all the way. I totally understand trying to, um, that you need income. You need to be able to put, you know, to pay for the roof over your head and to put food on the table. I understand that. But also at the same time, use other skills that you have on these freelance marketplaces too. And if you only do voiceover on the side, that's fine too. If you want to do it full time, that's fine too. If you want to do it just once in a while, that's fine too. You know, do whatever you need to do. But I wouldn't completely give up. I wouldn't completely give up because that would just be I would hate to say a waste, but it would be it would be sad and um, just all the time in training and money that you've invested in the gear it would be unfortunate to let all of that time and, and energy go to waste. Right. Keep your head up is what I'm saying. Keep your head up and do it on the side if you need to. If you need to get uh, another, you know, a full-time job or a second job or something, that's, you know, do that. I mean, do whatever it is that you need to do. But just do it on the side every once in a while. If it's something that you really want. And then, you know, maybe somewhere down the line, things will improve. And you'll go full-time with this again. It is so hot in here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Kathleen H. says, good morning from Wyoming. Good morning, Kathleen. Let me just make sure that my air conditioner is on because I'm starting to, it thinks I'm not here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Sorry if it gets loud, but I need it. <laughs> it's so hot. Uh, Kamikaze says, hello, Angela. Hello, chat from too hot to early California. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we've had, uh, like, this is day 19 of being over 110. <laughs> so hot. We need that monsoon. Gosh. Chrissy Sells is here. Good morning. Good morning-ish from North Carolina. Yes, 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 yes. Phil says hello to, to Joya. Dylan says, good afternoon, all. Hiding in a broom closet at my 9 to 5 to watch for a bit. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> Caesar says, on a good day, meh, I feel like I can do VO. On a really good day, I'm strutting up that mic stand with a goal. But the very moment I mess one thing up, confidence collapses like a stack of cards. And I get that, but we're human. We make mistakes. You can't beat yourself up over one little mistake. The glorious part of voiceover is that you can redo things. You can re-record it take another take, right? If you messed something up, do it again. <laughs> and then edit out the goof, right? But don't let that stop you. Those are human things. Those are normal human things to make mistakes. We all do it. My gosh, if you guys could see some of the <laughs> recordings I've done in the last couple days, and my little clicker, every time I make a mistake, all over in there. Just redo it as many times as you need to until you feel that it's right. Who says you can't? But don't let that hold you back. Don't let that mess with your confidence. Just know that you'll, you'll, you can do it again. 
Pamela McDonald says, good morning, all. Good morning, Pamela. CBS Deals has a personal cooling kit for $45. Looks booth handy. Ooh. What is that? CBS Deal? What is that? CBS Deals? A cooling kit. Is it like a cooling kit for your person? Or does it sit inside the booth? What does it do? Caesar says, anyway, hello, everyone else. Hello, Caesar. I'm seeing many names from Platinum. Just wanted to say I love every single one of you, and you've kept me motivated beyond what I'm capable of by my lonesome. Thank you. And that, thank you for saying that, Caesar, because that goes back to the, I think, the training and the funds for uh, funds for equipment and training and, and things like that. If you can't afford funds for training and, you know, join a mastermind, join a Facebook group, get connected with other like-minded people, people in this industry, because they are willing to help and support you and to lift you up when you're feeling down and to answer questions, right? And then at some point, when you do have a little bit of funds to invest into training, mentorship, or into like a, like a mastermind group, like my platinum group, then do that. Because I think the community in and of itself is so helpful and so much of it, not only a confidence boost, but we understand, right? We understand what you're going through. We understand the trials and, you know, the frustration of trying to learn your DAW. And this, this is a lonely business. I'm sitting in a room by myself talking to a camera. I know there's, you know, 53 people watching me right now which makes my introvert kind of scream a little bit. But <laughs> I think we need the support. This is a very isolating job. It's a very isolating job and it's very lonely. But knowing that you can reach out to a group and say, hey guys, this is where I'm at. What do I do? Or please, you know, shoot me a couple of likes or, you know, lift me up. I need it. I'm feeling a little bit down. They can do that for you. They can do that for you. And I think that is so important for our own mental states, not only in helping us to improve and move forward in our own businesses, but my gosh, for your sanity. Oh, we got a super chat. Hold on. Sean Lester. Thank you, Sean. There is a lot of valuable free advice on the net, but how far will that take you? When it is necessary to seek private lessons and pay for learning. When is it necessary? I think when you when you're ready for them. For me personally, I I've always been a very headstrong and stubborn person. I've always tried to be as self-sufficient as possible. So I took all of my education and learning upon myself just just through everything that I could read, everything that I could find on YouTube, on the net, like you said, until I started to plateau. Right. I was seeing I was seeing increased business. I was seeing some success, but then I would plateau. That is when I reached out to a coach to show me what I was missing, to help me to teach me things that I didn't know. Right. Because you don't know what you don't know. So I sought out a coach to teach me the secret sauce. Right. What am I missing? What do I need to keep moving forward? And that was about maybe just a little over a year, perhaps. I was about a year in when I decided, okay, now is the time. And at that point, I had made enough money to be able to invest in coaching. And I think in hindsight, I probably should have started with coaching sooner. I think I would have probably seen a much better trajectory <laughs> and much better success had I reached out sooner than I did. But again, stubborn, headstrong, <laughs> so um, I think as soon as possible, I wouldn't say in the very beginning, unless you really need help understanding your DAW, but I think it's beneficial at the beginning to get you started out the right way, what to look for, right? The do's and what not to do's. Those would have been very, very helpful to know before I found them out my heart, you know, the hard way myself. And to probably set me off or set me up in a little bit of, of a better way. I should have started sooner. So I think that question must be answered by you and what you're feeling. 
But I think the sooner the better, honestly. I think that is when you should reach out to a mentor or a coach. Um, <laughs> and I, la I lost where I was. Hold on. Um, okay, so here we are. Mary HP. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hello. Hoping everyone is having a great Tuesday. So far, so good. Hope yours is fabulous, Mary. Joya says to Phil, it's time to share your book title and where to find it. I'm sure everyone is excited to hear about it. Yes, we are, Phil. Kamikaze says, I try to be perfect, but I need to just keep recording, be satisfied and move on. And I, that is that is difficult to do. It is difficult to do because why? We are our own worst critics. <laughs> you hear your own voice in a recording and you go, ugh, that is just so cringy. That's just so wrong. I don't like it. I hate it. No one's going to like it. They're, nah. Don't do that to yourself. Because again, just think of it this way. We are the voices of the world. You're representing someone with a voice that can't do what you do right? So as long as you feel that you have the correct um, tone, purpose, emotion, that you're interpreting the script the correct way, and that is being conveyed through what you say or how you say it, let it go. Record it. Move on. Right? Right. Don't be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. There's too many definitions of perfect. So don't go for perfect. Go for satisfied. I think that's better. MG Steven says, good morning, Angela and everyone. I landed on tech and DAW, but it was a toss up with that and performance acting because I think we're going to be constantly tweaking these as long as we're in this. Uh, yes, exactly. It's, it's an ongoing education. It's ongoing refinement right? As you go along, because things are going to be changing. Things always change. Nothing ever stays the same forever. So keeping on top of trends and keywords and the way different people or different groups of people communicate, right? Because, you know, this is a global business or maybe clients that you have on the other side of the world that use terminology that we don't or different generations communicate or prefer to communicate in different ways. So being on top of all of these things is, is it's an ongoing education, right? It's an ongoing learning and refining. I don't think I'll ever be completely happy with my setup, completely happy with my delivery. I'm never going to be completely happy with, I think, anything, right? The way that my effects rack is. I'm always constantly tweaking it when I probably shouldn't be because it's probably fine, <laughs> right? But you're right. It's it's constant. And I don't think it, it, it ever stops. But you have to be satisfied, as Kamikaze said. Not perfect, but satisfied. Mary HP says, my biggest obstacle is my time. Some weeks I have time to do it, uh, do it all. But most often the day job just gets in the way. Yeah. And this doesn't have to be an everyday thing. Right. I sure as heck didn't do it when I was working. Sometimes I had other things that I had to do. But if there was something pressing that needed to be done, then I made a little bit of a sacrifice in time and got it done when it needed to be done, when it was due. But you don't have to work at this every single day. You work at it when you can, when your schedule allows. I mean, obviously, the, the more time you put into it, the more success you're going to see faster. But I mean, your time is what it is. You just have to work with what you have and don't beat yourself up when you can't do it as often as you think you should, right? Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's, you know, responsibilities and everybody's different. So do what you need to do in the time that you have to do it in. Phil says to Joya, already uploaded the ebook version. What if my neighbor even bought a copy? Now it's finding a way to upload the audiobook. I don't think I can with my account, my ACX account as narrator. Oh, okay. Joya says, Phil, you need to set up a second ACX account as an author rights holder. Then you will be able to find your book in the search and upload, upload everything. 
Uh, M.G. Steven says, excuse me. And of course, it's so hot in here. And of course, we all love new gear. I just bought a small table stand for my mic for travel. I'm going to take my rig on vacation for the first time coming up. Well, good for you. You'll have to let us know how it goes. And who doesn't love new gear? I uh, love new gear. Uh, let's see. Facebook user. This is Chris David. Hello, Chris David. Good to have you here. Phil says to Joy. Yeah, I thought so. Got to create another email. Refill the forms. Joya says, where's Miss Angela's new CAD E100SX? It is actually in its box on the floor. I had, I had it hooked up yesterday, this weekend. I had it, I was playing with it a little bit. And it is a very good mic, <clears throat> but I had a pickup to do this morning from when I was using my Sennheiser. So I had to rehook up the Sennheiser and do the pickup. So unfortunately, we're looking at my Sennheiser, not that I don't love my Sennheiser. I love my Sennheiser, but I'm trying a new microphone, the CAD E100SX. And it does actually have a, a lower noise floor than my Sennheiser, which um, I measured it yesterday. It was about 7 dB lower with the, um, the 10 dB pad and the, the high pass. It was about 7 dB lower than my Sennheiser. And it sounds really good. I'm still playing with the uh, positioning for the mic because I have i can't really necessarily place it off axis like this. It has to be really close, but a little off axis so I don't get the plosives. So I'm still playing with positioning to get the best sound out of it, but I really like it. I really like it. It's a great mic. Um, I'll have to have it on for our Thursday meeting so you guys can hear it. Rich says, how far are you willing to climb to reach your goals? That is the big question for everyone here. Yes. Six months or less in this business is not enough time. Yes, I think, I think you really need to give it a good year. Maybe even more. And again, everybody's journey is different. But... So you can't beat yourself up if something doesn't work the way it does for everyone else, you know, at a certain point in time, because everybody's time, you know, the abilities that the, the amount of time they have in a day or everybody's, you know, schedules are different. Everybody's income or funds that they have available to invest in this is different. Everybody's different. Everybody's journey is going to be different, but you're right, Rich. And Sometimes those obstacles are, they seem large and looming. But again, I don't look at them as challenges or something that's going to just completely stop you. I look for a way to get around it. I tell myself that it's temporary and there is a way around it. I just need to find that way. And I will continue to move forward, right? It's all about mindset when you get to that place which goes back to your why. How strong is your why to do this, right? You will find a way if, you're, if your why is strong. That's my belief anyway. Sunny says, yes, where is the new mic? It is in here in its box, staying safe and clean, dust-free until probably Thursday. I'll, I'll make sure I have it on Thursday. Rich says, it took me 19 years to accomplish my goal of covering the Super Bowl as a reporter. That's awesome. That's awesome. 19 years. Mason Reconstruction says, I've not done any audiobooks yet, and the specs for ACX seems a little intimidating. Yeah, it was for me too. But uh, after some frustration and some time and a lot of trial and error, I figured it out. I figured it out. And you can too. It is. But once you understand all the lingo, I think, and once what everything means, it's a little bit easier to achieve. And who's to say you can't reach out to somebody to help you? You know, there's a lot of people that work with ACX and understand the standards. Ask for help. Kamikaze says, love the comment at Joya. Mm-hmm. Liz Jones says, thanks so much for all you do for us. Your insight is so very valuable. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening to my rants and tangents. 
Oh my gosh. I apologize for the tangents. Uh, Facebook user, this is voiceover Steve. Hey, voiceover Steve. How you doing? Greetings via Facebook and via YouTube. I watch and listen to you from two devices for more pleasure. Good morning, Angela. So like one in each ear. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching the replay or maybe if you would like to watch the replay, but you don't have YouTube premium or, you know, maybe you can't watch, you'd rather just listen. I'm starting to upload some of these older, uh, these older sessions onto my podcast, She Lancer, Mom Entrepreneur with voiceover Angela. So that way there's just another platform to listen to these uh, live Q&A sessions. Yet another way <laughs> to listen to me go on off on tangents. <laughs> D Smith says, what if you don't want your actual name online? How can you have a business and get paid? What is the best way to do this? There's a, a quite a few people actually that have like a stage name or a pseudonym um, for their business. But the only caveat to that is that you have to make an entire presence around that that fictional person, right? You have to build an entire business, show, social media platforms, not to mention the whole, you know, legal aspect of that, you know, the DBA under, there's a lot to it, but you can. I know some people who do. You can do it. it takes a little extra time, but you can. Absolutely. Esteban says, greetings via Facebook and via YouTube. Um, it's just the same comment as the voiceover Steve. Is this you, Esteban Steve, voiceover Steve? Tristan Sartoris, Sartoris says, any advice for controlling your breathing while narrating? Do I leave the breaths in when recording or edit them out? What is your method? Thank you for any info you can provide. I think we're humans and we breathe. So for audiobooks, leave the breaths in, especially in dialogue. I think leaving the breaths in and like the nonverbal noises that we make, you know, the sighs and leave all that stuff in. It makes us even more human. So don't control your breaths. Leave them in there. If it's like a big, weird, gasping breath after a long run on sentence or paragraph or something, or if you have a little bit of a throat gargle in the middle of a breath, you know, if it's off putting or distracting, take that out. But normal, natural breaths, leave them in. We breathe. We're human. We breathe. Leave them in. My cup of tea 101 says, as I have looked at voice acting, I realized that it helps to look at this with an entrepreneur. Absolutely. This is a business. Voice acting is a business. Audiobook narration is a business. So you have to be an entrepreneur. You have to look at it as whether freelance or full time or whatever it is, you know, it's it's a business. So definitely look at it that way and start, you know, thinking about putting money in a in a, a separate account, you know, whether it just be PayPal. And then once you become an LLC or whatever, and you have a business checking account, keep everything separate, you know, for tax time. That's just one aspect of it. But if you treat it like a business, you'll go further, I think. And it'll be easier in the future to untangle all of the things, right? Business from personal. So treat it as a business. And I think you'll be um, better set up, I think, for the future. Absolutely. Also, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for taking time to help fellow, fellow VO aspirants. Aspirants. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Angela. You're welcome, my cup of tea 101. I'm glad you're here. Phil says, I'm thinking about creating a fiber myself. I thought maybe I could make income with the producing skills I've learned. Yes, yes, you can. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about if you have other skills, offer them on these freelance marketplaces. Why not? You have the skills, you have the education, you have the ability, as long as it's a digital asset. If it's something that you can deliver digitally, whether it's an image, it's, you know, work, that you can deliver via, you know, upload or download, offer it, offer it. That extra income is not going to be a bad thing. Joy West says, good afternoon, everyone from nice summer feeling, Michigan. 
Is it nice summer in Michigan? How hot is it in Michigan? I must know. Joy. Chrissy Sal says, love the premium group meeting last week. And I'm so bummed I have to miss this week, but my kids have a performance at the same time. Well, we understand that. Kids are more important. You got to do the kid stuff. You got to do that stuff with them for sure. I might be able to jump on toward the end. That's cool. Jump in, jump out whenever you can. We'd love to have you, but we, we get it. We understand the kid stuff is more important. You got to be there for that. I'm glad you like it. Uh, JCC AOL says, hey, Angela, first off, keep cool. I am trying. I can't say that enough. For me, it is time. And one thing I am thinking of doing is saving up some funds and paying some bills in advance and focus on my website. That's a good idea. <clears throat> That's a good idea, paying some bills in advance. Yep. And your website, I think, is is fairly important. It is important to have a website. It's, it's important to have a digital home base. Because if you think about it, how many times have you researched somebody before you purchased from them? It doesn't matter what it is. You did research on them. You read the reviews about them. You made sure that they were who you, who you, who they said they were, right? Our clients do that to us too. So for example, if someone finds you on Fiverr and wants to make sure that they're not going to get scammed if they order from you, and then they Google you, they take your username and Google you, and then they come up with your website, that adds a little bit more credibility, right? And if you have a contact me and you have uh, some demos on there, you have a little bit of about you, some pictures of you, that just adds a little bit more credibility to who you are and your professionalism. And at the same time, they might even also see maybe your profile on Upwork. They see your profile on Voices.com or whatever other pay to plays you're on. Again, credibility and professionalism. Not only that, but if they don't want to work with you on Fiverr and want to work with you via your website, they have the ability to because you have a website, right? And not only that, if you're starting to market yourself on social media and make more and more connections with people on social media, if they Google you, they'll find your website, right? They'll have a find another way to contact you directly. Have a website. Platinum Group. I know. I know what you meant, Chrissy. It's okay. I hear you. Johnny Tate says, what Caesar said. Thank you, Angela. Yes, Caesar is a doll. Michael V says, I can't stay today. I'm watching Sound of Freedom on a date with a wife at the theater. Interesting. Interesting. I've heard some stuff about that one. Let me know if they turn off the AC or something. <laughs> Roni says, 54, mind you. Uh, Ro Roini, did I say that right? 54. What, your age? I'm not sure what 54 means. I'm close to that, so don't let that stop you either. JCC AOL says, I think it comes down to taking some time off your job and going all in on this. That being said, have bills paid in advance and have money you can live off of. This is at least one option. Um, yes, for me, I started to build a, a cushion right away. I started to slowly build a cushion that would support me once I retired from my corporate job. If like worst case scenario, if I went full time with this and then completely fell on my face, I could still pay bills for a few months, right? I think that was one of the smartest things I did. And then I would just continue to build that, you know, because you, you have to pay taxes on, you know, your freelance income. You have to pay taxes on all that stuff, not to mention everything else that keeps the business running. So it's smart to have a cushion anyway before you make the leap. That's very smart, JCCAOL. Wendy is here. The queen, the doyen. Hey, Wendy. Hi. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Major confusion. The how of social media stumps me. Well, we could definitely, this, this week in our platinum group, we're going to be talking about Fiverr and Upwork. <clears throat> and we can also talk a little bit about social media too and how you can um, market yourself or promote your Fiverr and Upwork profiles on social media as well. Um, yeah, social media is, we can talk about that too. I think we need to talk about that. Maybe we can even talk about that on a whole nother QA session. We'll get you there, Wendy. 
My Cup of Tea 101 says, do you work with talent agencies at all with some of your work or is it mostly through the sites you mentioned and social media self-advertising or a mix of both? I actually don't have a talent agent at this time. I don't. I've been completely on my own and solo and so far I've done just fine. Um, I have started to look at talent agencies uh, locally, but I haven't reached out to them yet. Mostly work for hire freelance all on my own, all on my onesie. Um, most of my business, most of my business comes from a few pay to play sites or people who find me on YouTube, people who find my website. So it, right now it's about a 50, 50, right? 50, 50 mix. But I also offer other services on freelance platforms too. And I also have another, other couple streams of income as well, not just pay to plays and voiceover stuff, but other things like I resell books and things like that. I have multiple streams of income, which I think is, I, I recommend that for everybody, not just to have to rely on one stream of income. Uh, Tracy Parker says, hi, Angela. I just found you yesterday on YouTube. I've been wanting, hang on. Let's see, where did you continue? Oh, here you are. Uh, I've been on the fence for a year thinking I needed training to get started. Um, you don't initially, I would say training is definitely beneficial and it would behoove you to start training sooner rather than later, but you don't necessarily have to have training before you started. It goes to what I was, uh, if you just found me yesterday, you might not have seen my video where I'm talking about ready, fire, aim, right? Once you get to the ready, fire, just go, just start doing it, just start recording, right? Start trying new things and then refine your aim to where you want to go. So you don't need to wait on any one thing to go, just go, right? Learn your DAW, learn your recording software. Your DAW is your digital audio workstation. That's your recording software. Learn, pick one and learn that. Get the equipment you need Focus on your recording space. That's one of the most important things. And then get started. Practice, practice, practice. Learn, improve. Reach out to someone who can then further refine your skills and help you along your way. But you don't need to have training to get started, per se. Don't wait. Just go. Joya says, I like tweaking my sound because it means that I'm growing and learning new important things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm constantly tweaking stuff, probably when I shouldn't be. <laughs> but it definitely helps to learn new things. Uh, Kamikaze says, I'm the same way, Angela. YouTube vids and self-sufficient. But I'll go seek out a coach early on to get that secret sauce. The secret sauce. That's right. I think, I'm sorry, I think I skipped over a couple of comments when I was looking for Tracy's. Uh, Tristan Sartoris says, I heard you say wanting to perfect your effects rack. I'm not familiar could you explain what that is and how important it is? Your effects rack is the effects that you use on your voice to clean it up in your recording software, in your DAW. For example, um, I have a very noisy room. I could probably hear my computer, but usually I have my door shut. But I have elements that um, make my room noisy. The noise isn't really audible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for like regular voiceovers, but for audiobooks, because we have to hit a specific noise floor for audiobooks in particular, there are effects that reduce that noise. There are also effects that reduce the sound of mouth noise. There are also effects that reduce the plosives, right? There are also effects that reduce the sound of sibilance right, the sibilance. There are effects that help improve the quality of your audio or make you sound better or help to remove things that you don't want to be there. Those are your effects. And your effects rack is um, all of those together. All of those effects, your effects chain or your effects rack, right? Those are, in Adobe Audition, you can build an effects rack consisting of all of those different effects. And then you can save that as a preset that you can then use on every single audio file that you create. So they're automatically there and applied. I've got tons of videos on this here on my channel. Take a look. 
And I go further. I dive a little bit further into these. <clears throat> Brandy says, good morning, Angela. I find it hard to relax when it comes to going into different characters. I feel so fake and I feel it comes out of my performance. Any advice? I think having a firm understanding of who the character is, their background, where they're coming from, why they're saying what they're saying and how they feel about it, really putting yourself into the character's shoes, right? Become them, understand where they're coming from and be them will definitely help you to get through that, right? If you genuinely are feeling and just kind of like let everything else go in your head, don't worry about the breaths, don't worry about all the things that you do that you're supposed to do and not supposed to do and just really focus on how the character is feeling and why they're saying what they're saying and just, you know, do that, be them. That helped me anyway, although I probably still sound like I'm coming across fake, but at least I know that I did my best. I did my best and I was satisfied with what I did, right? And it also comes with practice. I think for you, for character work in this kind of a situation, joining a group, like a mastermind group where you guys can work on these things together and then get multiple other perspectives uh, and maybe tips for on ways to improve or maybe somebody says something that just clicks with you, right? I, that's why I say getting training or at le the very least joining groups of like-minded people is very beneficial to get you going and to pa get past any obstacles you may have. <sighs> Sorry, you know, me and my coffee. Tracy Parker says, oh, okay, that's the one that I was just reading. Um, did we do Joya's? We did. The secret sauce for Cami. And then I think we left off here. Jennifer Alford. Hello. Hello. This is a new career op for me, and I'm excited, but I feel anxious as to where to start. What should I set up first? All the equipment, apps, new lingo. It's a lot. How do I stay on track and positive? It is a lot. It is a lot. It's a completely foreign language. <laughs> all this equipment and all this stuff was completely foreign to me. But in my 40s, if I can figure it out, I'm confident that you can too. And it took a lot of um, lurking in Facebook groups and asking questions again, joining groups and having access to information. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. <clears throat> um, and then at some point, maybe getting a mentor or something to help, you know, point out things that you're missing or to help improve your sound. You can even get an audio engineer to audit your booth, right, to get the sound dialed in. There's a lot of things that you could do. But I think in the very beginning, and again, I have a lot of other videos here on my channel uh, regarding all of these different things. One of the most important things that you can do is treat your space, right? Make sure that the room that you're going to record in is dedicated to recording, right? Meaning that once you have it set up, nothing's going to change because small changes in your room will, will be audible to your clients or could be audible to your clients. So you want to have a dedicated, treated recording space. Treated, meaning that all the walls around you, the ceiling, the floor, the door behind you, everything that's going to possibly reflect and, and cause an echo is treated with some sort of or covered with some sort of a soft surface to help reduce the echo. And then your equipment, it doesn't have to be fancy and expensive, but you can't use your phone for voiceover or audiobook narration. So it needs to be an external mic. I actually have a few recommendations on my website. If you go to voiceoverangela.com and to the VO gear tab, there's some recommendations on equipment, some stuff that I've personally used, some other stuff that I've heard great things about. Maybe I'll give you an idea of where to where to get started with that. But there is a lot to this. And all you can do is to eat that elephant one bite at a time, right? Take all the time you need to get it done. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get to, you know, this point that this other person did in this amount of time. Everybody's journey is different. So give yourself some grace, have some patience, and hold on to your why. Again, back to the why. The reason that you want to do this, 
has to be strong or you might not make it very far because there's a lot of obstacles. There's a lot of challenges, right? There's a lot of ebbs and flows. There's a lot of things that may, you know, pop up that you don't know how to, to deal with because this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a business and it takes a lot of dedication and time but just go at your own pace, right? Take all the time you need to get to or get past or through around. Just learn all that you can, soak it all up. Joey West says, I know how important it is to get training for things like acting if you don't have an acting background, but those classes are so expensive. I usually have to wait to save up money to enroll. And that again is also very normal and very common. Because the people that you want to learn from have the experience and they themselves have probably had to pay for training and stuff. So they're, that information that they're giving to you is valuable and it is an investment and it is something that all of us still do, right? There are voice actors that have been in this business for 5, 10, 15 years that are still learning from other people and paying for these courses. It's a necessary investment to improve to gain the knowledge that you seek. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of people that are going to give, you know, that kind of training and knowledge for free. I mean, YouTube is a fantastic place to be, you know, to glean all that you can. But if you're looking for something specific, like acting, you're in a, or um, a specific niche of voiceover, it is well worth it to pay that investment to learn what you want to learn because that information is valuable. It is an investment. I'm still saving up to meet with some people. <laughs> Sean Lester says, my why auditioning is competitive. I love to compete. I love to play, make believe, and I love my boss. I love my boss too. <laughs> Tess Stalker says, I'm waiting to meet with my VO coach in Atlanta, listening to you. Glad to catch your pearls today. Thanks. That's awesome, Tess. That's awesome, Tess. Glad you're here. Um, Dylan says, it's 80 degrees where I'm at in Michigan. Perfect day. Oh, that sounds lovely. It still says it's 98 degrees here. I don't believe it. I think it's over 100 already. It has to be. I'm sweating. Look at me. I look like I'm melting. <laughs> D. Smith says, would you set up PayPal under stage name? Um, if that is what you're planning on doing, because this is something that I would probably get in touch with your attorney or your, your lawyer about, because um, I don't want to give you the wrong advice. But I, I think that you can set up your invoices with whatever name and logo and business information you want to. But I think at tax time, you want to make sure that everything's copacetic, right? With the IRS and the name you chose and then the business and all of that stuff all is, you know, lined up and, and appropriate. So I would definitely probably reach out to your tax advisor attorney or somebody with the credentials to answer that question. But I would I would think so. I don't know. I'm not um, a professional in that respect. Uh, Carlos says, glad to be here as I came late, but I am a sponge. I'm ready to record something as soon as I leave work. Excited to progress. That's great. That's a great mindset, Carlos. That's great. Makes the day go by very slow, though, when you're excited to get home. But you know what? I'm glad you're pumped up. You got this, Carlos. Good for you. My Cup of Tea 101 says, speaking of taxes, at what point should one get their own tax ID? Should one get it after their first gig? A steady stream of income or what? This is new to me. Um, you can start as a freelancer, but at some point, I don't know what the dollar amount is. Again, reach out to your tax professional or attorney um, to get that information. But I think it was almost a year for me before I became an LLC and got my tax ID. But you can start as a freelancer. I think it depends on to what amount of money you start making, but you will need to start to pay taxes on the income that you make because the IRS will want, they'll have it, that information. So you'll need to also report it. 
Uh, Joy West says, yes, it is in the 80s here in Michigan. Thanks, Dylan Holt. It's going to be warm today. Mason Reconstruction says, for what it's worth, my free advice, please don't quit your day job and expect to begin earning a replacement income from day one. Too much stress. Yeah, again, everybody's journey is going to be different. And this, and I feel like I'm just saying the same things over and over, and I apologize, but this is a marathon and everybody's journey is different. You may see success in the first month. You may see success in the first few months. You may see success in six months, in a year. You might even say it on day one. It's very hard to predict, but it's going to be inconsistent and it's going to be something that you're going to have to stay with and keep trying and keep progressing and moving forward and building all the profiles and you know, filling out all the bios, creating all the demos, just keep going, whatever it is that you're, you know, whatever pace that you can, just keep moving forward. Even baby steps are still moving forward. But it does take time. It does take time to start building everything to the point where you start to see income and even a steady income you might not even see until, you know, a year in or so. So take your time and build everything out at the time that you have to give it. Hold on to that why. Wendy says, you are the queen. I'm just a lady in waiting. No, no, ma'am, I beg to differ. You are the doyen. Tracy Parker says, I will look for the video. Thank you. I've got tons of them here on my channel. In the audiobook narration playlist, there's quite a few. Uh, voiceover tips and tricks, I think, or voiceover tips. I've got a few playlists. I've got a lot of information here. Uh, Sunny says, thanks for continuing to share your story with us and providing a platform for us to do the same. So important to hear that we're not alone and others have gone through the same experiences. Yeah, I, yes, I think, um, and thank you for saying that, Sunny, because I think hearing people that I followed and I admired in the beginning, hearing their story and how they made it, made it so much more relatable and took a lot of stress off my shoulders knowing that I wasn't doing anything wrong, right? That this is a struggle. It is a struggle to learn all the new lingo, all of the new terminology, how everything worked together, what to do, what not to do, what to build out, what not to bother with building out, right? There's, there's a lot to this. And hearing everybody's story made it feel like, oh, okay, so if that was their struggle and they made it anyway, then I can too. Come hell or high water, right? I'm going to make this happen. I just need to know that I need to take what they told me, apply it to my situation and my schedule, and just do the best that I can and just keep going, most importantly. Just keep going, right? I think that was the most important thing for me. That and most important takeaway is just never stop. Just keep going. Just keep moving forward and improving and tweaking and refreshing, building, right? Tess Stalker says, had to run for my session, been busy with P2Ps. Marketing is my weak spot. Ugh, have a great week. Catch you next time. <laughs> yeah, same. Marketing is hard for me, especially if you're uh, an introvert like myself. It's hard to step outside the comfort zone. But again, this is a business, so we have to market the business. We have to let the world know that we're here and what we do and how to find us, right? And marketing is tough for me, too. Jeremy Blasi says, quick question. Do you use plugins during your auditions on P2P sites? Everyone I know mentions doing auditions raw, but I know they have the plugins running most of the time. Any thoughts? Um... That's a tough question because I, I hear the same. I personally use effects, but again, sparingly. I think um, it also depends on the clients, like the tech specs, like what it is they're looking for. And I also think that some of the interfaces like the Apollo Twin and things like that, where they have live effects running, and they just do the audition with live effects already on. That is one thing. But I would say only use the effects if you need them, right, for auditions. But at the same time, the audition is your first impression with that client. So you want it to sound as best that you can 
to make that impression and to get that job. But use those effects sparingly, I would say. That's what I would say. Uh, D. Smith says, should your demo for Fiverr or other sites just have your regular voice or should you put every voice and type of voiceover you can do all be in one? I would say make multiple demos, make a reel that's got a little bit of everything in it and then have an audiobook only demo and then have an e-learning only demo and then have an IVR only demo. And then you can even, even further refine an audiobook demo by having different genre specific demos. You can do it whatever way you want to do it. I have uh, several types of demos because you might have a client that does a little bit of everything. And so they're asking for a reel to see what your range is. And then you might also have an indie author that just has their one book and their one genre and they want to hear what you can do with that particular genre. So that way you have the appropriate demo to send the appropriate client, right? So I have multiple. Barb Cam says, hi, Angela. My biggest problem is the people in my house. Don't get me wrong. I love them dearly, but the stamp or clang or interrupt continuously. They don't comprehend flow and cadence. Could you, you might, you might have to be a night owl, right? Or, yeah, that's a tough one. You might have to sacrifice a couple hours of sleep at night or early in the morning before everybody wakes up. I don't know. Try it a couple times and see if it works for you. Or send them all off to the movies or something <laughs> while you have to work. I don't know. Think outside the box. Let us know how that, go how that goes, Barb. <laughs> Tristan says, thank you so much for explaining. I really appreciate it. You've answered all my questions and now I will enjoy the rest of the stream and marinate in this free knowledge. <laughs> have an awesome day. Well, thank you for that, Tristan. I hope you enjoy your marination. <laughs> Brandy says, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, glowing, I can retire. Glowing, I can retire. Good afternoon, Angela and chat. I hope you're all having a great day. Yes. So far, so good. I'm cooking alive in here. I'm melting slowly, but that's all right. Angela, great name. Angela Landon says baby steps. Or Angela London, excuse me, says baby steps. Absolutely. Baby steps. Run your own race, right? Eat that elephant one bite at a time. Joy West says, Barb Cam, I hear ya. I do all my work while my husband is out of the house. I learn my neighbors and work schedules, so I work around them. You can work around others like kids, landscapers, and others. Yep. Same here. I know the schedules of the landscapers, the tree trimmers, when everybody tends to leave in the morning, when they all come home in the evening, and then I work around that. Mm-hmm. Kamikaze says, before I had my mic on, before I had my mic on a stand, there were no problems with audio. Then I bought a desk mount stand. Now I'm seeing my audio pick up the uh, fan sound for my laptop. And it might also be the rumble of the fan too. So what I have got, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, you can't, but I've got what's called a shock mount on my microphone, which sort of makes the microphone float. So if there's any vibration on the surface that the, the stand is attached to, it'll just sort of float above that. It won't affect the microphone. So consider getting a shock mount for your microphone that might help you with that. Or move your laptop further away if you can, or both. Jim Frank says, you melt with grace, ma'am. <laughs> I melt with grace. I don't know. I look kind of melty. But if it's not too scary, I guess we're okay. <laughs> Uh, Glau and I can retire says my why is to become a digital nomad and re relocate to Thailand. First, I need to develop a base and become at least okay at this. Yes, I want to retire in España. I can totally relate to that. Caesar says quick thing, actually, you've sort of kind of known me for like a couple of months, maybe or something. What sort of training would you think I I'd need? Um, I think you have a very natural ability, Caesar, but I think I, if you're trying to further refine to one specific thing, I think I would find the person who excels at that one specific thing and reach out to them, right? So for instance, if you're feeling like you need more help with acting or you feel like you need more help with e-learning 
or more help with um, character work and audiobooks, I would find the coach that offers that specifically that you admire, that you trust, that you feel comfortable working with, and reach out to them for a coaching session. That's what I would do if I was in your position. I guess it depends on what it is that you need. Because I think, honestly, I think you could probably learn and refine it yourself, but it would take longer to do it alone, right? Without the specific person that is best suited for that kind of help, if that makes sense. We can we can talk a little bit more about that on Thursday or or over in Discord, perhaps. Uh, Joya says to Caesar, just do it. If you have the skills and talent, get out of your head and just do it. Or that. <laughs> or that. Just do it, Caesar. You are very talented, Caesar. There's no doubt about that. We'll talk more about what it is that you think may be holding you back. Caesar says to Joya, but, but it's nice in my head. I'm sure it is. All right, guys, I got to get going. So I'm just going to read these last few comments. Joy says, thank you so much for clarifying that, Angela. I'll just keep growing that savings account for those expensive classes. Can I deduct those classes as business expenses come tax time? Again, reach out to your tax professional. I am not qualified to answer those questions. Caesar says to Joy, but yes, I will. I have my week planned. Good. Sunny says next week's poll. Who is the real queen? Well, that's easy. It's Wendy. Come on, Sonny, you know this. Papa Mike says, Angela, do you still use a DBX2286 processor? I didn't see one of your videos from way back mentioning that. Yes, I do not still use it. Um, I stopped using it once I got my new interface. I have a uh, Universal Audio Volt interface now, so I no longer use my DBX. And the DBX I really only kept for the noise gate, which I ultimately didn't like the sound of because the sweet spot on it is so hard to find. It's so tiny, right? And I couldn't get it perfect. So it didn't chop, you know, some of the normal artifacts off of my voice off. So ultimately, I didn't like it. And I'm just only using the interface and my microphone now. No more DBX. MG Steven says, for me, it's about uh, it's been about balance, balancing family, friends, paid work, whatever form, because we need the income, bills keep coming, and VO. Balance and VO is adding, tweaking all aspects of today's poll. Yes, balance, and I think balance is defined by you and your schedule, because again, everybody's schedule and things are going to be different. And finding that balance is going to be hard, especially when something is new. But I think as you go along, you'll start to find places where you can like a lot time for this and then a lot time for this. Right. That's what I had found over over the course of the years that I've been doing this is that this day at this time is for this and this day at this time is for this. And that's the way it's got to be. Right. Sort of scheduling things right? That is how I found the balance. And then eventually I got to the point where like, I'm okay, I'm not going to work weekends. I'm going to, you know, only work from this time to this time on this day so I can spend more time with the family or catching up on other things that I need to catch up on, right? Finding that balance does take time, but I think you can eventually find it. Kami Kazi says, I'll look into it. Thank you. Uh, Kelsey V says, hey, Angela, everybody, I hope you're all having a great Tuesday. Today is auditions and direct marketing day. Good for you, Kelsey. Get it. Go get it. Glowin, I can retire, says, is anyone in chat using Angela's Platinum? I think I want to subscribe, but unsure of what she does at it. I'm looking for education and want to be a sponge. Well, my Platinum group on my website, voiceoverangela.com, if you go to plans and pricing, the Platinum group, I think for 20 bucks a month, is a steal. I mean, considering what other people are charging for other places and other things. But essentially what we do is um, I, we, being a platinum member, let me just back up and say you have access to practice scripts to create your demos out of. We have a weekly meeting on Thursday nights where we meet for two hours and we go through practice scripts. We talk about like this week, we're going to talk about Fiverr and Upwork. We work on character voices. We do the wheel of emotions. It's a fun game. 
And on top of that, you also have mini challenges. You have access to my blog. You have uh, access to our private group Discord where you can access anybody at any time to ask questions. I think it's a tremendous value for what what the what the fee is. Um, a great place to be. And we're uh, a tight knit family there. Right. And we would love to have more members, more family members. I think the more the merrier in that respect. Right. Not only for my perspective, but when you have a great mix of people with multiple different perspectives and experience and skill levels, we all sort of learn from each other. We all learn and grow in in that community. Tangent number 16. I lost track. Papa Mike says, thanks. Angela Elder says, is it absolutely necessary to have a proofer if you are narrating and producing? Not absolutely necessary. No. No, you can proof it yourself. Or you can hire someone else to do it. Either way. Uh, Caesar says to Glowen, platinum is awesome. Join us. <laughs> we'll be happy to have you. There is, however, no hot tub. Not yet. We're working on it. But there is punch and pie. <laughs> Glad when I can retire says, okay, I'm sold. What time on Thursdays? We meet uh, at 8 p.m. EST on Thursday nights. And we typically go about two hours now. And we have a great time. It's very casual. Adult beverages are allowed. But we get the job done. We have a lot of laughs. Caesar says, I think it's Thursday, 8 p.m. EST. You are correct, Caesar. And I think that is going to do it for today. I have to get going. But thank you, everybody, for joining me today for another live Q&A session. Um, I wish everybody a very productive and successful week. And don't forget to just keep at it, right? Whatever obstacles are in your way, they're not obstacles, right? They are temporary little inconveniences that you can get past. You just need to find the way around them, right? All right. Tangent number 25. All right. I'll see everybody next week. Bye.